I got the call from Takina, she was so excited. She wouldn't let me sleep until I responded. And I'm a little slow sometimes in responding. And I got the call. She was so excited. I said, God, I bless you. I bless you. And I must be there. Give it up for my husband. Yeah. Yeah. That's my good thing. Yeah. A product. Many of you know when I was here, we were still in the testimony of waiting. I didn't want to hear that waiting and be patient and trust the Lord. Like you, when he approached me, I was like, mm, I don't, I don't hear God. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I needed the time. Yeah. And you know, God is so faithful and so real. Six years he waited for me. Yes, he did. Six years he was a friend. See, y'all was prophesying it was coming. In six years he knew what God had said, but he waited for me to get it together and hear God for myself. Come on. And when I finally heard God for myself, then the Lord opened up the door. See, we don't like process, but I'm so glad because if God had done it when I asked him to do it, he would have been raising me. And instead, we can walk side by side because he ain't got to raise me. Come on, I wish I had one more in here. He didn't come at me sexually. He didn't do any of that. He didn't talk no foolishness. He came in the door praying. And when the Lord said yes, he proposed in four days. He don't tell me that it take God all day to do what God is doing. When God is in something, he moves loving, kind apostle and prophet who speaks into me and has my back. Has my back. You know, people say you need this and you got to walk with this. And if you, you know, the, the anointing sometimes makes us look more mature than we really are. And I had all this list of things people wanted me to embrace and accept. And, you know, when, when the Lord finally spoke, I said, God, I thank you that I didn't listen to people because I'd have been married a few times the wrong way to the wrong one. But I thank God for the weight. I thank God because it produced something. Many of you remember my son who was praying and seeking it. He was up here more than I was, ready to receive his father. And I kept saying, well, Lord, do it, do it, do it. And we went to Africa, and he took all of my money and sold. I had $3,000, our food money, my nail money. You know, come on. And he said, I need a dad, and I want us to sew. And I thought, okay, I'm going to give you, you know, I give you 100 grand. It's not a big deal. You know, you know. He went in my wallet and left me with the 100 and took all of it and put it on. I said, well, God, but God did it. Didn't he do it? In a matter of months, God did it and answered his prayer. And he is the product of many prophecies that I received oh in this church. Oh and so God. I thank God for that. Yes, I thank God yes. for that. I want to get to the word. Turn to John 9 real quick, real quick, real quick. The Lord gave me this and it messed me up. It's still messing me up. Still messing me up. We're going to walk through this. John 9, 1 through 3 and 6 through 7. As you're turning, God was dealing with me about what we need for this particular hour. I won't be before you long, I promise. It's a short word, but you've got to catch this one. He said to me, tell the people I want to make them over. All right, all right. And I said, well, how many sermons can you preach on being made over? You know, what else is there to say? You either got God or you don't. You either save and feel or you're not. But he said, the reason the people are in need of a makeover is because they're still not doing God. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. I said, you mean to tell me that we are sitting in church? Well, what are we doing every Sunday if we are not technically doing God? I mean, we're coming to church and we're doing praise and worship and the praise dance is going forth and the organ sounds real good. You tune up to E flat and drop a drum beat. We gonna dance. What do you mean we are not doing God? He said, if your life is not a reflection of the fruit that I promised in the book, you are not doing God. All right, all right. Teach it, teach it. Teach it. I'm gonna be made over. I said, what do you mean? My life must be a reflection of heavenly fruit. He said, I never called anybody to be broke. Uh -huh. I never called anybody to live check to check. Go with me. I never called anybody to be depressed or stressed or sick. Come on, go with me. He said, if your life is not 
thriving, right. then you really don't know me. Yeah. All right. All right. This was hard for me too, y'all. Just go with me because I had to do some soul searching and some thinking. He said, if you are not walking in miracles, signs, and wonders, you really do not know who I am. Because I do not save you to come to church and do praise and worship. I save you to save somebody else. Therefore, your life has to be an example of who I am. The children of Israel were destined to be wealthy because the desire was for nations to look upon them and say, let me put my God down and find the one that they know. And God says, if I'm looking at the church, don't nobody really know me. They can't even identify with who I am. Hallelujah, God. Yes. Was the time. Yeah. You came to church with a walker and a wheelchair. And we didn't let you leave the same way. There was a time you came in with a diagnosis. And you didn't walk out with that diagnosis. There was a time the doctor said one thing. But you could shout on the report of the Lord. And now we are coming in claiming cancer. Claiming all of these things that come straight from the pit of hell. Pray for me. I'm sick. Pray for me. I'm depressed. Pray for me. I'm stressed. When you go get God. On a beam. May over. Yes. So he said, I need the people of God to understand that your life and your, your faith life is not predicated upon what the apostle tells you every Sunday. In fact, you got to open up your own book and make sure that what he said is in there. We are without. I'm not saying you don't have a man of God who preaches the word, but if you don't know it for yourself, what will you do in the midnight? When he cannot pick up the phone, you got to give the Holy Ghost something to work with. All right, all right, all right, all right. Amen. All right. All right. So he said, you need to be made over. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. He said, I want to do a complete transformation of mindset. Complete transformation. To stop you from begging God yeah. for what is already promised. Yes, yes. I love it. I love it. If you need transportation, does that qualify as a need? Yeah. Does that qualify? Talk back. Does that yeah. transportation qualify as a need? Yeah. Right? You got to get from point A to point B. Yeah. But my God shall supply all my oh, need according. Okay. So now that you've checked that off the list. Uh-huh. <laughs> We can stop seeking God for needs uh -huh. and start seeking God for destiny. Yeah. 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 We can stop seeking God for things that are already covered. Listen, yeah. put the word on it yeah. and start asking God, remove whatever's barricading me between you and destiny. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He said, if everybody in here right now was walking in purpose, this church would be Outside, you have to have five services, no, no. right? You say because no. everybody would be walking in the anointing and the calling. No. Church was never supposed to be for us to keep training you on how to get to where God wants. You ought to get one lesson, but when you really get God, the purpose of church is to come and refuel so you can go out and do what God said. Not we got to keep refueling you and delivering you and saying. Caught 
can fight you the right way. So he said, we need to be made over. He gave me this text. I really am almost through. John 9, the 1 through 3, 6 through 7. Evangelist Lydia, can I borrow your, your reading? Mm -hmm. And as Jesus passed by, uh -huh. he saw a man which was blind from his Stop birth. Stop right there. As Jesus passed by, mm -hmm. we miss that one sentence every time. Because mm -hmm. we skip to who he saw. Uh -huh. And we never focus on the fact that Jesus saw him first. Uh -huh. Go 